Hey guys, how's it going? Zach with Slate Robotics. This video is uh, the TR2 unboxing. This is the initial setup. This is how to put it all together and this is how to get your first program up and running. That's what we're gonna cover in this video. Now today is a super exciting day for me. I've been working on the TR2 for well over a year now and um, it's an incredible design. It's an incredible product with many great features. Um, first of all, is the box. As you'll see, this is a 26 by 26 by 26 inch box. This houses the TR2. We can open it up. There's a robot in here, um, which is incredible. Um, the few of you that uh, you know would have gotten the TR1, the first robot that we built, you would have known that that was a massive, massive project. This is something you can fit in your car. This is something uh, you won't have any problem with lugging up and down stairs or um, getting into your, your house or your apartment, wherever you are, uh, this will be a nice, easy, simple process. So that's really cool. Um, there's just a few connectors, you know, electrical things to just click together. We'll go through that. Um, and then also how to screw a few of the stuff in. There's just a few um, little pieces of hardware, nothing crazy. Um, I guess we'll see, but it should take, you know, just 15 minutes or so to put this thing together. So really excited. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so as we mentioned in this box, there's a TR2. Uh, when you get this, there'll be tape all around it. You'll have to cut the tape. I'm gonna assume that you guys know how to cut some tape. And then, once you do that, you'll be able to open up the top here. Now, there's a couple different things. There is, uh, this is the base. So you see this kind of um, partial hexagon here. This is with the hole in the center, that is the base. Um, over here with the actuator being exposed over here, this is the torso piece. This is the head right here. We'll get to that in just a second. And um, there's some other various hardware. There's everything you need um, is uh, screws and the tools and all of that that's over here, along with the power cord. Those are kind of stuffed down in here. So you'll be able to see all that. When this ships, um, there will be additional material. I'm thinking probably um, some bed sheets and other sort of... Uh, uh, foam padding to help protect some of these parts, but um, this video is just to show how to do that. So first things first Let's pull some of these tools out So we'll have some screws here We'll see uh, These are these kind of coarse threaded quarter inch screws are These screws with a quarter inch socket on top. Um, this is some other sockets that are going to help us assemble this. These are the same screws as we had before, but they're a little bit longer. And then some more finely threaded screws. I believe these are M5 um, by about 50 or 60 millimeters in length. Um, these will be used for mounting the arm to the torso. These will be used for mounting the actuators to various components um, on the robot. Um, there's some other stuff in here, but first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to take these smaller screws and we're going to take out just two for now. So what we'll want to do is assemble this head onto the torso. So all we need to do is just pull this over here and be sure to tuck the wires in into the hole. Uh, so you want to make sure that none of the uh, wires get pinched anywhere. And then now we can just sort of feed two screws through here. Um, let's see, and then over here we'll have our uh, quarter inch bit, which is what's used to drive these screws. All right, so we've got the head on there. We'll want to probably double check um, that that's tight in just a second. Um, so I'm going to start pulling some of these parts out um, and laying them on our table over here and then ultimately pull the base and uh, the torso off and start screwing that together. And now by grabbing on the sides, we can just pull the head out. All right, I just need 
to grab the base. It's a little heavy, but if you have some muscles, you can grab it, no problem. This is the power cord. Okay, so I've got over here all of the parts for the arm. We'll go over that, we'll, we'll hit it one by one. Uh, but first things first, now that we got the base out, we're going to put the torso on top of the base. You'll notice there's just these two connectors. One's a USB cable. This one goes for the camera. Um, and then there's just a power cord. And this supplies power to the actuators in the arm and in the head. So um, really simple. So all we'll have to do here, uh, there is some additional hardware. Um, and I'll go through that um, to assemble the um, torso. But uh, basically what we're doing here is we're taking the torso, using this hardware, we're attaching it to the base, and then, you know, before we tighten everything up, we need to make sure that these connectors are on there um, in connecting the power, so the, the torso is getting power, and also that camera cable. So, these three um, strange little attachments here, this is what um, uh, basically fastens the, the torso to the top piece. You'll notice there's some labels on the side here. This one says BR top. This one says uh, front top. And then this one says BL top. The BR and the BL, that stands for back left and back right respectively. And then front top is here. So all that means is that we're going to take this and using these bolts up here, we're gonna put this in, we're going to fasten this piece of aluminum extrusion to the front here. Just line up the holes and then tighten them in like that. And then we'll do that same for the, the back right and then finally the back left. All right, so as mentioned uh, before, we're going to mount this to this. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, you'll need this 13 millimeter socket head um, in order to do that with your included tool. So let's loosen all of these bolts out front here. We'll loosen all but the last one. Now we'll go in and line up these holes right there. So that piece of aluminum extrusion is threaded all the way through. You'll want to assemble it um, so that these bolts here on the front are facing out that way. Okay, and we'll get everything positioned and then once we have that, we'll go through and uh, tighten things down with, with this tool. So there's the front piece on. Now we've got back right and back left. Uh, back left is in the orientation of the robot, like from the robot's perspective. So we'll do the same thing, but with those bolt holes facing out, facing away from the robot. All right, there they all are. So um, again, like I said before, we, we wanna make sure these aren't um, too tight right now. Um, we wanna keep them pretty loose. That'll help us assemble uh, the torso on top of this. So I'll move the camera and um, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do, the torso will be pretty light because we don't have the arm on there yet, but we're gonna invert it um, and we're going to grab one by one, these little um, tubes and put them in here. This will help us uh, get everything positioned on there. And drop that down. We're not going to worry about the, the um, wires too much right now. Oops. There we go. Just like that. So we're not going to worry about the wires. Um, while we're doing that. See, now that we've got it on here, we can um, kind of, what I like to do is wedge something. All right, so I have the base kind of uh, wedged up here so that we can access some of the wires and get those connected. Make sure, here's the power cable from below, and this is a power cable from up top. Make sure that you connect the bottom, the power cable from down here to the power cable up top. Now, you might be looking at this, there's an additional wire 
that actually goes for the arm. We'll need to feed this through. Um, I'll show you that in just a second. Let me get the uh, USB cable done. All right, and I got that done there. So what you should see, there is a power switch right here on this side of the robot. We can flop, uh, switch that power switch, flop that power switch, whatever. Um, and then you'll see the head will have some lights come on right there. And I'll turn the power switch off. You can see it turns off. But if I turn it on, you can see the power um, is being displayed there. So if, if that light doesn't come on, that probably means you, you've plugged in the wrong connectors um, and uh, you might just have to need to swap that, swap that over. Okay, so we need to feed it through this hole right here. And there we go. So that's just gonna go out like that and that'll supply power for the uh, rest of the robots. Okay, so we've placed the torso up on top of the base. This is cool. We're probably about halfway there, doing good. Um, what we need to do now is to uh, kind of shake these internal things around, uh, the internal square aluminum tubes to make sure all the holes line up. Uh, we'll put the top holes on first. Um, so that will hold the square tube in place and then we'll line up, you kind of have to line up the hole from the, the, um, the HDPE panel here with the square tube with the um, aluminum extrusion uh, all the way on the inside. So again, it helps. We'll go around uh, one by one and uh, put the screws in for the top and kind of shake it around until uh, we get everything fed through. Like for this one in particular, it's not, uh, oh, there it goes. You can see it drop down there. So I had to kind of shake it around there. But now I can see the top hole here. Might need to kind of whip something in there to get it lined up. There we go. Now I can put the bolt into the top. Cool, so I've done that for all three of those. Um, and uh, all we need to do now is just, uh, again, we're keeping everything loose for now to, to make it easier, make everything kind of shift around. And then now we just need to go through one by one and put these other ones in. I need to stick something into the hole to make sure it lines up. Okay, so we have put all of the bolts onto uh, the robot connecting the torso to the base. All we need to do now is just go back and retighten everything. We can tell that everything's positioned and everything's nice and tight in here. You should be able to pick up the torso, pick up the whole robot from the torso. That's a good sign. Um, you shouldn't see any shifting. All of these should line up pretty well. Um, so nothing else there. You don't need to go crazy on these bolts. You know, just a little bit more than finger tight, you know, using the wrench. Um, or this little socket tool thing um, is good. Uh, it'll be tight on there. You won't need to worry about, uh, you know, going crazy on that or anything. So we'll just finish this up. All right. Uh, we are well on our way. We have a full robot here. We have a head with the camera, the base, all of that. All we need to do is put the arm on there and we will be good to go. You'll notice this one off funny looking piece right here. This is what mounts to that right there. So we'll feed the wires through here and then we'll take um, some screws and mount it to that. The screws that you need they are the finely threaded screws. They're about this size. Um, there are six of them that match with this here. They're not the coarse ones. They have the, uh, the um, screwdriver um, bit will attach it there. So what you'll need to do is take your tool, just like that. Put the screwdriver head on there. Feed the wires through. You can kind of pull those through to make sure they get all the way through. And uh, one by one, we're gonna go put all these screws on here like this. I wanna go a little bit tighter on these. Nothing too crazy though. You really don't need to be um, you know, stripping any of these threads or anything like that. 
Uh, it's got six bolts on there, which should give it plenty of force, even if you don't quite tighten it all the way. Um, but yeah, no need to go crazy on these um, bolts, just to where it's um, tight to the touch. Okay, this is one of the more distinctive pieces in the kit. Uh, we got one actuator here with this kind of L-shaped part and out there. Um, it really should be fairly obvious uh, how to assemble this arm. I mean, you can just look at the pictures, um, but hopefully that helps you out there. Uh, all we need to do is grab, I feel like I'm saying all we need to do a little too much. Hopefully it's pretty straightforward. I think um, the, the base uh, connection is definitely the most quirky. So we have these threaded screws, the coarse threaded ones, the only ones you should have left anymore. And you've got the longer ones. You have longer ones and shorter ones. So what we'll do is we'll take the longer ones and uh, those will go here. For reference, the longer screws are what attach to the bottom of the actuator. The shorter ones are what attach to the actuator cover. Um, so I'll just screw two of these in on opposing ends, um, finger tight. This will help you. If you've got somebody to help you and position it, that, that's a good thing too. Um, but if not, it's no big deal. So we'll just put those through just a little bit, plug in the connector, and what you'll need to make sure you don't do is pinch any of these wires that are exposed here. Like that. Let's see. Let's, um, there we go. Just like that. Um, you need to make sure, and once we have this finger tight there, it'll stay in place. You'll need to make sure that uh, with every time that you screw um, one of these actuators in, that this opening is exposed on every actuator that you screw in, um, so that you can have access to reprogramming the microcontrollers that are on here. There's a little microcontroller exposed there, you plug in a um, USB connector and you can uh, upload your own code to that. Um, that could be important um, with software updates. I mean, there'll be a tremendous amount of updates with uh, this robot over the years. Um, so that would be your way to upload your own code there. Um, just like that. That's how you'll line everything up. So there'll be six more bolts here. We'll tighten those. Um, again, finger tight. Uh, don't need to go crazy. Six bolts should be enough. With, for that one, we'll need the quarter inch socket attachment here. And we'll go through and tighten all those in. All right, next up, same but different. Uh, this actuator is like this. Um, if, if your robot came in three parts for the arm, uh, we've got the first one, the second one, there's an actuator on each end, and then the third one is really easy because that's just the gripper. Um, so that's how you can potentially not get those mixed up there. All right, reach through, pull this wire connector here, plug those in there like so, and then feed in the wiring into the cavity up there. Again, not making sure you don't get anything pinched. Um, it's also a good time to remember to grab your screws. So we're screwing into the bottom of the actuator. And if you'll remember, as I mentioned before, you will uh, use these longer screws here. And once you get one in, a little ways, it'll hold on to it pretty well. All right, last but not least, um, now we're screwing into the actuator cover here, not the bottom of the actuator, so we're going to use these shorter screws to do that. Um, and since I've decided to start using my brain, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a few of these into their slots uh, before I try to position everything. Okay. Don't forget to plug in the connector. If you forget to do that, your arm won't work. You'll 
feed the wires through there. Get a, that over. There we go. All right, I've got some great news. We've got a robot all put together here. So uh, now we're going to run through some software. We're going to uh, I'm going to show you how to get the robot booted up. Talk a little bit about that. But all of the hardware, all of the screws and bolts, assuming you didn't mess anything up, um, that should all be rocking and rolling. So now we're going to uh, uh, turn this robot around, and I'll show you the back of it. Where to plug in the power and uh, get uh, get this thing programming. Get your first program run on the TR2. So that's pretty excited. So exciting. So let's do that. All right. So we're at the back of the robot here. This is the kind of control panel, the control side, and the other side we got the logo on here just for reference. Um, this is the battery. It'll show the the power um, percentage through the back here, so you can see that there. Um, right here is where you'll plug in 120 volt AC. Um, this is whatever the Americans use. I can't remember the frequency of the AC that uh, us Americans use, but only 120 volt AC and at that frequency um, for this, anything else you could damage it. So um, be careful with that, it's particularly 220 volts or whatever some other countries use. So 120 volt AC. Um, look up the specs to what the Americans use for the frequency of the AC, and that'll be great there. This is the power switch. The power switch uh, controls power to the actuators and the motors. Um, the idea there is that you can program on the computer, and you can kind of treat this power switch as an emergency kill switch, um, and you can still keep your uh, computer running so you don't you know, lose any programs or software or anything like that that you're working on, any data that you're in the process of working on you can hit this kill switch and it's not going to turn off your computer. And then here we have uh, USB um, uh, ports there and then an HDMI port here. So the idea is plug in the HDMI, plug in your keyboard and mouse, which is what I'll do in just a second, and uh, we'll be able to start um, programming on the robot. Uh, and then up front, I'll go ahead and turn that around. We'll open up the um, uh, base. We'll be able to see the internals. And there's a power switch on the computer, um, just right in the front there. Um, and you'll be able to see some green lights whenever that uh, turns on there. So that's got the computer um, turned on. We've got the power to the actuators here. We've got our charging cable plugged in. That'll be important because uh, your robot's probably dead after traveling. And uh, I'll show you some programming and how to get started from there. What you have to do here is uh, just press that button. And then those green lights on the front indicate that uh, that computer's on. What we're going to do in order to get our first program going and get the robot up and running is we're going to open a terminal window. We're going to do ROS launch TR2 underscore no TR2 pi and then TR2 underscore node dot launch. So that's ROS launch space TR2 pi space TR2 underscore node dot launch. There's also a little getting started um, tutorial if you visit our GitHub page for our TR2 underscore essentials package. Uh, there's a brief little walkthrough there so that uh, you can follow along there if you need any help. So we're going to press enter and we've got got connection from 192.168.77.2. That's like our actuator network router per se. And we've got TR2 waiting for states and all of that. So this is all good. To verify that uh, everything's working properly, we can do uh, ROS topic echo slash TR2 slash state, press enter, and here we have this uh, joint state object um, which has all of our actuators and all of our positions getting published there. So now if we want to actually control something, we can do ROS topic and we just publish a command to the ROS topic. So ROS to topic pub hyphen one. That means publish once. And then TR2 joints A0. Uh, first, we're going to actually have to change the mode. So when these things start up, they default into servo, or they default into rotate mode, which means it only accepts rotate commands. Uh, we'll need to change that to, uh, um, 
into servo mode so that it can accept positions and we can change the position there. So ROS topic pub hyphen one tier two joints A0 mode. And if you press tab from there, you'll get uint eight is the message type and it will enter a two. So zero is rotate, one is back drive mode, and two is, uh, is the servo mode. So we'll press that. We hear some buzzing, because now it's trying to uh, adjust the position and keep the position um, uh, steady. Um, and then now, if we want to uh, actually move it, we can do tier two joints A0 control position, press tab again, we'll get float 64. And uh, here we can send, so here before, we have 6.12, or 6.1825 is the state of A0. So in order to uh, change the position, we can do 6.28, we can do that, and now it moves just a little bit. We can move it a lot more, we can say 1.5. And then um, we can move it back to zero. Then if we finally want to stop everything or we want to quit the buzzing, uh, we can do, uh, we can publish a zero to the mode, which will turn it back into rotate mode and it'll stop um, doing any buzzing. It'll stop controlling the position of the actuator. Um, so that's a really easy way to control uh, this robot. All right, so we just ran the uh, the TR2 node package to set the positions that way. I'm going to show you another way that you can really get up and running here pretty easily. So here I have the TR2 hello world.py file, which is in our TR2 essentials package inside the TR2 pi sub package. And uh, if you look at this file, it's really simple. We'll get ready to run this in just a second. Uh, this gives you a nice little template, nice little boilerplate to get started. All this is doing is just grabbing the state, grabbing the positions of a couple different actuators. And uh, then it's taking those, it's adding or subtracting a little bit, setting the position based off of that, and then setting it back to the final position. Um, and then where it finally closed. So it's a super short uh, program, but this will give you a great uh, example for how to get up and running and um, yeah, just uh, th this way, you know, you can take this code and you can uh, you can modify it based on what you want to do, and hopefully, you can get up and running really quickly with that. So all we need to do uh, is ross launch tr2 uh, pi, and then tr2 underscore hello underscore world dot launch. We press enter, and we'll see the tr2. There we go. Super simple program. Just runs through some of these commands. Just basically sets two basic positions here and then stops. So super simple. Um, this is a good, there's a lot you can do with this, just having the knowledge of how to, to, how to use um, just these basic functions here. All right, folks, that'll do it. You've got a TR2 up and running now, uh, which is super exciting. Um, any programs, please keep me updated on what you guys are doing, what you're working on. Um, obviously, any problems or issues you have, let me know. If you're, um, really, I would start with the question and answer section of our site because those are great because that gives a nice little record of issues that other people have had. Um, you might help someone out down the road, so that keeps everything public there. Uh, but of course, email me or call me um, even if you have any issues. Um, you will have my number if you've placed an order. Um, so that's pretty much it, man. Um, good luck. Have fun. Uh, you know, any issues, any problems you guys have, um, I will help you out in every way that we can um, with that. But um, you, this should be a lot of fun. This should be really cool. I'm super excited to see what people are going to program and build with this and the kinds of applications people will develop. Um, there will be more updates and tutorials on how to do different stuff. Um, so you'll have to be, you know, a little ambitious today um, in terms of, you know, 
digging into maybe some of the code or you know, you know bugging me to, to you know help help you guys figure out how to do stuff. But either way, more than happy to help. Um, thanks for uh, well, thanks for placing an order with us. That's awesome. Thanks for uh, being a part of the TR2 community and uh, have a great one. Have fun, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>